My God, God bless you this morning. My God, my brothers and sisters, it's time to receive the finished work at Calvary today. How many know the work at Calvary was a completed work? Yes. It's all done. Matter of fact, Jesus said it is finished. Yes. Hallelujah. It's time to stop hoping and start expecting for our healing, yes. our increase, our green pastures. Yes, Beloved of the Father, the Bible declares in Psalms 103, verse 23, this is a familiar scripture. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh, oh my soul, and forget not all oh, his yes, benefits. Yes. Sometimes we just look for the paycheck and forget we got a 401 plan. Amen? That's Sometimes we're looking for a paycheck and forget I got a sick day coming to me. I say, God said, forget not all his benefits. How many know you may not have two niggas to rub together, but you're supposed to be joyful? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, do you understand? Rain ain't nothing but liquid sunshine. I will not forget all of his benefits. Yes. The Bible says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgive it all thy inequity. Uh, Who heal it all oh. oh, my diseases. Not some of them. Hallelujah. God want to heal sinuses today. Yeah. God want to heal people off of cigarettes and, and alcohol and gambling. God wants to heal marriages today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord. The Bible says, forget not all his benefits. Yeah. My God. Hallelujah. Listen to this preaching this morning. God does not make mistakes. Amen. He makes miracles. Yes. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes. God wants to take those that are on drugs and alcohol and turn them a stick into a miracle. Oh, oh my God, I was telling them, the man of God, I say one of my favorite sermons over there is, my mistake won't stop my miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God does not make mistakes. Amen. He makes miracles. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe the Holy Ghost is stirring up in true believers. And that understand victories are fought and not taught. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. You can't come to a room like this. You can't go to church and say, can I get my certificate for my victory? No, you got to fight it. You got to fight to get off of the team. You got to fight to get your marriage where it belongs. Hallelujah. I believe the Holy Ghost is stirring up some folks that say, hold on, I understand victories are fought and not taught. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As Christians, we must deal with the lumps and the bumps in the road. Yes. As Christians, we must deal with the good days as well as the bad days. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Children of Zion, it is our level of faith and our applied action that will determine or will uh, determine the outcome of our faith that will produce a positive result. Yes, Lord. Anybody can talk a good game, hallelujah, but it is the faith level that you apply your action to that will produce a positive result. Hallelujah. Amen. Our canon king laid down two steps that we should follow. First step, give up all your possessions that have you. Oh, it's okay to have possessions. You just can't let the possessions have you. I said the first step, he said, is give up all possessions that have you. Amen. The second step, give up all of yourself. Yes. That's my house. No, that's my house, brother. I can hear guys say, oh, that's my car. I said, mm, brother, that's my car. If I tell you to pick somebody up, what you gonna do? Get my wallet. Get my money in my wallet. God said, mm, mm, got my wallet. How many know we were bought with a price today? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give up all of yourself. The Spirit of the Lord declares, have you thanked God for all that he has done? Hallelujah. Come on, turn to your brother and sister and say, have you thanked God? For what he has done. Some of us are waiting to thank God for what he's about to do to, tomorrow. You understand if God don't do nothing else, I'm thankful. Amen. I talked to a man of God and he said, man, I just had to pull on the side of the road and just start to cry. Because if God don't do nothing else, I'm like, Lord, this brother must be in, he must be in here because that's what we're preaching on. That's right. Folks forget. That, well, God, you got to bless me with a bigger job. you got to bless me with a bigger house. Man, if God doesn't do anything else, or you're satisfied with what he's done already. Yeah. Hallelujah. I say, we got a mighty word today. Did you come expecting a word today? Yeah. Say, I'm going to get what I came for. Yeah. Come on, tell a false say, say, I'm going to get what I came for. Yeah. We're not playing church, we having church. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
My God. Come on with me to verse 11. Ooh, this is finger looking good. Hallelujah. My God. This is a very familiar passage. Everybody talks about the ten lepers and one praising, but there's so much meat on this bone. My God. Listen, I'm going to encourage y'all to eat the gristle today. There's some gristle that's going to be good on this bone. Amen. 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 Verse 11 declares that it came to pass. Every time you read in your Bible, it came to pass. It means something will happen over and over and over again. Meaning that the devil's not quite sure you're delivered off of nicotine. And about a year from now, he's going to try to see if you're still delivered. In the matter of fact, the devil is not convinced that you stop lusting. Hallelujah. About another year from now, he's going to send Miss America to you. You understand? You'll be like, ah, she, ooh, ooh, she winking at me. <laughs> Do you understand? And it came to pass means something that will happen over and over and over again. You cannot misconstrue what it came to pass and come to pass. That's two different meanings. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem. Everybody say Jerusalem represents the church. Jerusalem. How, how many know Jesus is always on his way to church? Hallelujah. <laughs> He said, and I must build what I must call my church. Hallelujah. Amen. My God. He's the head of the church. Wouldn't you expect him to be there? Hallelujah. There ain't no corporation in America going to have a, a, a board meeting, any kind of meeting, and the CEO ain't going to show up. That's right. I said, how many know he's the CEO? Hallelujah. We had that with the seven criteria of working in the kingdom. The, the enemy going to try to convince you that the, the, the business is falling and it's failing. But Jesus said, but on the third day I shall rise again. Oh, oh yeah, the CEO coming back and he coming back as a bad king. Yes, the Bible says that he came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Listen, by faith, turn to your brother and sister and say, I never saw that. I never saw that. I know you did. I didn't either. How many know Samaria, rep Samaria represents Gentiles? Yeah. Samaria represents Gentiles. The Jewish people hated the Samaritans. Remember the woman at the well? What do I have to do with you? How many know Jesus in the midst of Samaria represents Gentiles, which represents unsaved folks? Now he going to the church, and on the on the way to the church, he on the street, and he meets. Stop right there. I think I know that person. Stop at Samaria, and he stopped at Galilee. How I many know who that's when he, he uh, called some of his disciples at the shore of Galilee? Can I tell you, Galilee represents religious folks. Uh, All right. Folks that think they, they have an idea of God, but not a reality of God. Jesus was right in the midst, and they did not receive him. Is that right? right? Do you understand? You can go into a church, and Jesus ain't nowhere there, because there are religious folks there. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible said he was going to Jerusalem, and he stopped by Samaria and Galilee. I said, well, hold on. They say he's from Galilee. He said, yeah, they didn't even want me. How many know church folks don't want Jesus when he messes with their religion? Yeah. Right. All right. Galilee represents folks who are holy and righteous and don't want to deal with any other type of folks. Mm. Listen, he was going to Jerusalem or to the church. How many know the, the church must learn how to have tent revivals yeah. in Samaria yeah. in Galilee? Oh, yeah. Do you understand he had a revival? Yeah. How many know he done pitched a tent and said, everybody that don't want to go to church, y'all can meet me here under yeah. the tent. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see them? I'm making it up. He said he met some folks that didn't want to come to church. Hallelujah. Now the folks that he met that did not want to come to church were men that were lepers. How many know lepers mean folks that got issues in the flesh? There's some folks that don't want to come to church because they got issues in the flesh. But be of good cheer. I'm coming with a tent and I'm going to meet you in Samaria, Galilee, Third Ward, Independent Heights, Lacoste, Haven. I'm going to meet you on the street. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, that's right. I misread it. The people got healed in the church, right? No. Or did they get healed right here on the street? I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, this is good. God wants us to take it to the street, brother. I believe God's throwing up some folks and saying, mm -hmm, there's too many religious folks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks need to come to the tent, brother. My God. Now, watch this now. Praise the Lord. 